Chapter 3, Section 2 Branching and Merging In BPMN, branching and merging is described by the help of gateways. Let us first look at the so-called XOR gateway. This gateway represents an exclusive OR choice. The XOR split gateway takes a token and forwards it to that output branch where the corresponding condition is fulfilled. At a later stage of the process, these alternative branches may converge again. The XOR join is used for that. Token may be arriving on one branch or the other branch, but anything that is processed afterwards is the same. Let's have a look at a simple process to understand how the XOR gateway works. Here we see an invoice checking process. Once an invoice is received, we need to check the invoice for mismatches. Now we arrive at an XOR split. We progress depending on the conditions that are mentioned. If there are no mismatches, we post the invoice. If there are mismatches, but they can be corrected, we resend the invoice to the customer. If the mismatches cannot be corrected, we block the invoice. Once we have blocked the invoice, we continue towards the XOR join. The token is simply forwarded to park the invoice and the process completes. If the invoice is posted, the XOR join also simply forwards the token to park the invoice and the process completes. And the XOR join also simply forwards the token when the invoice was resent to the customer. Let's look at the second type of gateways. AND gateways. They are used to indicate that parallel flows are triggered and that they are synchronized. Let's look at the AND split. If a token arrives at the end split, two separate tokens are created on the output side. These can be now independently processed. The XOR join requires that not one token, but there is a token on each of the incoming branches. And these tokens are synchronized. Only one token is provided on the output side. Let's have a look at a typical process where the end gateway makes a lot of sense. The airport security check process. Passengers receive a boarding pass and with that boarding pass they can proceed to the security check. Now two things have to be done independently from each other. The person has to be screened and the luggage of the person has to be screened. You may know from personal experience that sometimes you are faster and then you have to wait for the luggage. At other times, the luggage is already there when you have progressed with your screening. The end gateway creates two separate tokens for these activities. And these tokens can be independently processed now. So it may be the case that first the person is screened and then the luggage. Once both are done, the AND join can synchronize these tokens and the person can proceed with the luggage to the department level.
There are situations where XOR and AND gateways are not enough. Let's have a look at an order distribution process. A company has two warehouses, one in Amsterdam and the other one in Hamburg, that store different products. When an order is received, it is distributed across these warehouses. If some of the relevant products are maintained in Amsterdam, a suborder is sent there. Likewise, if some relevant products are maintained in Hamburg, a suborder is sent there. Afterwards, the order is registered and the process completes. This process can be represented using AND and XOR gateways. When an order is received, the order line items are checked and we approach the first XOR gateway. This XOR gateway is a split distinguishing three conditions. Either the order only contains Amsterdam products or the order only contains Hamburg products or the order contains both Amsterdam and Hamburg products. If both Amsterdam and Hamburg products are included, an AND split is used to separately forward the corresponding suborders to the Amsterdam warehouse and to the Hamburg warehouse. An AND join synchronizes these two branches. Finally, an XOR join merges these alternative branches such that the order is registered and completed. We observe here that the activity forward suborder to Amsterdam warehouse is actually shown twice. In the middle it is the upper activity and the second one at the bottom. Also the forwarding of the suborder to the Hamburg warehouse is shown twice. This is an ineffective way of representing that process. How can we do it better? We can represent so-called multi-choices by the help of OR gateways. An OR gateway indicates that one, several or all subsequent branches are triggered for an OR split. Corresponding conditions are indicated on the arcs. The OR join now has to synchronize those branches that have been active. If it was only one branch active, the token is directly passed on. If there have been several branches active, they are synchronized. Now we can have a look how our distribution process looks like if we use OR gateways. When an order is received, we check the order line items and the OR split is approached. If it is only Amsterdam products, we forward the suborder to the Amsterdam warehouse and the OR join forwards this token towards registering the order and order completion. Similarly, if only products of Hamburg are relevant to the order. Again, the OR join uh, forwards this token towards the output side. If an order is relevant for both warehouses, the OR split generates separate tokens for each of the corresponding branches. Then the corresponding suborders are forwarded to Amsterdam and to Hamburg and the tokens are synchronized before the order is registered and completed. We have now seen three different types of gateways to indicate three different types of behavior. 
There's a fourth major type of behavior that is called rework and repetition. This is not shown by the help of a new gateway, but we will use gateways that we already know. Let's read the text of the ministerial correspondence process. In the Treasury Minister's office, once a ministerial inquiry has been received, it is registered into the system. When the inquiry is investigated, so that a ministerial response can be prepared. The finalization of a response includes the preparation of the response itself by the cabinet officer and the review of the response by the principal registrar. If the registrar does not approve the response, the letter needs to be prepared again by the cabinet officer for review. The process finishes only once the response has been approved. How can we represent such repeating behavior? We can represent repetitions using XOR gateways. Let's look at the model here. We see that the inquiry is received, we assign it and investigate it, and there is an XOR join gateway. This XOR join gateway is the entrance into the loop. In the loop, the response is prepared and reviewed, and if approved, the process completes. If not approved, we use the loop to jump back at the earlier point, and then we prepare and review the response again. The XOR join marks the entry of this loop and at the exit there is an XOR split.